Okay, we come to Job chapter 18, and we're going to take another little step here. And Job is a type of Jew in the tribulation period. The 42 chapters in 42 months of the Jew, the tribulation. And Job gets visited by God in a whirlwind, and Israel will be visited by God. And Job's been saying chapter 16 and 17, listen, just be quiet. You're no value. You, you're, you are quacks. I don't want to hear any more. I'm in pain. I'm in agony. You've been no help. Be quiet. Chapter 18. Bildad doesn't listen. He speaks. Now, I'm a man. And I don't know how many are. Many would disagree in the ministry. I'm a man of Bible numerology. 18 to me is 6 plus 6 plus 6. The mark of the beast. Now, I'd beware of numbers of 18. I'd go about with the chapter markings and the verse markings, 18, 13, and numbers like that. Chapter 18, just by Quinky Dinky. Now, the chapter markings and the verse markings are not inspired by, by the Holy Spirit, but they're inspired. Chapter 18 relies to not Job being the wicked man, but we're going to look at it in the eyes of the Antichrist, the wicked man. And it's amazing. When you look at the parallel, now, Bildad's yelling at Job, but remember, we can take doctrinal aspects of these men and apply them, but not to Job. There's been many truths said, not about Job in chapter 18, as far as Job, throw it out the window. But you can take doctrinally, and you can apply it to the Antichrist. Now, Scripture is applied in three ways. Historic. Job 18 has happened. Doctrinally, where do you put Job chapter 18? You can't put it upon Job. But you can put it in the tribulation period upon the Antichrist. And it's spiritual application. I can preach out of Job 18 and apply it to a Christian's life, though it's not written to a Christian. How, oh, and then answered Bildad to Shuhite and said, Now he's angry. How long will it be ere ye make end of words? Won't you just be quiet yourself, Joe? Mark. Well, there's the first reference in the Antichrist. Mark. <coughs> and afterwards, we will speak. We've had enough of you speaking, Joe. Now we're going to speak. Wherefore, are we counted as beasts? Chapter 17, verse 10. You know, you guys are not wise. You don't know nothing. And reputed, that's reckoned accountable, vile in your sight. Why are we so vile? Why are we so vain? That's what Job said. They do listen to each other. Give them that much credit. So, we're nothing in your eyes, Joe, but we're going to keep talking. He teareth himself in his anger. Now, that's not to God and that's not to Job. What is the Antichrist anger? God, Jesus, the Jewish people, the devil, the Bible says, Revelation 12. Cast out of heaven. He's angry. He's wrathful. He's going after against that woman and that child in the wilderness. He tears himself in his anger. Shall the earth be forsaken for thee? Now for Job. Job, do you think everyone's going to leave the earth just so you can get what you want? And for the Antichrist, there's a group of people called the Jews that are going to flee. They're going to disappear. The ones that don't get caught. To a place prepared by God. And shall the rock. Be removed out of his place. Job I mean. What do you think God's going to do for you? You say well what, what, what has to do with the Antichrist? I'm going to stretch myself out. And this can be totally wrong. With that temple that's coming in the tribulation period. Right now where that temple is supposed to be there is called a dumb of the rock. 
I'm going to just leave it like that. But the rock has been removed because Paul says in Corinthians, that rock that gave the Israelites in the wilderness water to drink, that rock was Christ. And when the church is gone before the tribulation period and the rapture, the rock goes. And you're not going to see a reference to the rock until he comes on the horse with the fire coming out of his eyes and the sword coming out of his mouth to cast judgment upon the people and the nation. Comes back as a lion. Yea, the light of the wicked. All right, here we go. The wicked. Mark in the Bible, the wicked, the wicked. Not a wicked, the. A personal by wicked. Now, the implication is Job. And we've had Eliphaz tell us what the wicked man is. We had Job in chapter 16 tell us what the wicked man is. And now, Bildad, Job, you're the wicked man. Shall be put out. And according to Thessalonians, according to the book of Revelation, they end up in the lake of fire that burneth forever. Revelation 19. It's funny how you say the light, because the devil has no light. But, 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 does not the Bible Paul write to the Corinthian church that he is transformed as an angel of light? Did not Jesus say, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven? I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel. Shall be put out. Death. No more light. And the spark of his fire shall not shine. So he's going to go out. And hell is spoken about a fire, but a dark fire. Darkness. You're not going to see anything in hell, but you're going to burn in a flame without light. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle. Hell. That is Satan's tabernacle. Hell. And it was made by God. Jesus said, hell was made for the devil and his angels. That's where he's going to live for all eternity. Here are God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit going to live for all eternity. The most holy of holy place of all. And he gave Moses to make that in the planet Earth for the children of Israel. And his candle, that's the first time that word shows up, shall be put out with him. So a candle is a type of light. It's a type of living. And when we go to the book of Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, a candlestick is a type of the life of the church. We're supposed to be living lights. Let your light shine forth as a city on, on a hill. And people will use this. I let my light shine. You even know what you're talking about. Because if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have the light. You have darkness. John chapter 3. You got the devil's light, which is an imitation light. It's a transformer light. Printing. The steps of his strength, the wicked, shall be straightened. And his own counsel shall cast him down. We're talking about there's ten kings that reign with the Antichrist. And just it's a messed up. The devil's going to fall by himself. Jesus Christ will put the Antichrist and the beast into, into the pit. Satan will be bound up for a thousand years. Then cast off in the lake of fire by God. Cast down. Cast down to hell forever. For he, this is the wicked man, is cast into a net by his own feet. Now we're going to look at some traps. A net is something that catches your feet. And he walketh upon a snare. That's another trap. Wherever this guy goes, he's set in a trap. And the trap's going to catch himself. He's set in a trap for the children of Israel. And, and he's going to get caught himself. He gets so prideful and so, hey, I am so great against God. I am doing such great wonders. And he falls by his own counsel. The gin, that's the first time that word shows up. And it's not alcohol. It's a snare. It's a trap. For what? Shall take him by the heel. If you not read that prophecy, I'll read it in Genesis 3. Genesis chapter, I'll read Genesis 3. 315, I think it's 315 or 16. Uh, this is the devil and the Antichrist. I try to turn my page here. Genesis, oops, not there yet. More page. 
Genesis 3.15. And I, God, will put enmity between thee, the serpent, the devil, and the woman, and between thy seed, the devil, and her seed, Jesus, it shall bruise thy devil's head, and thou shalt bruise his Jesus' heel with a nail print. Well, be not deceived, Satan. God's not marked. Whatsoever, whatsoever man sows, that he shall also reap. You're going to get the heel of Jesus. Jesus is going to get your heel. And don't be fooled because it's not Mary. And you will find pictures of Mary. She's stepping on the serpent. No, she's not. Women are afraid. And the robber shall prevail against him. Now, I'm going to go to Matthew 12 if you want to go there. Matthew chapter 12 is another remark of Jesus and the devil. Matthew 12, no. Yeah, Matthew 12, 29. And when I want a strong Jewish flavor, I use Matthew. And Matthew is Jewish. I'm having a hard time to repeat. Matthew chapter 12, reference to the devil and Jesus. And verse number 29. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house, the devil, and spoil his goods, the devil, except he, Jesus, first bind the strong man. Oh, I want the reference to that is. That's a thousand years where the devil is bound with a chain. And he first bind the strong man, the devil, and he, Jesus, will spoil his house, the thousand year reign of Jesus. It's interesting. The robber shall prevail against Jesus said as a thief in the night. The snare is a trap. It's laid for him in the ground. And the trap for him in the way. There's people out to trap the Antichrist. Get him, and there's movies about it. Terrors, terrors shall take him afraid on every side. Again, he's trying to relate to Job. Remember, Job said, Everything that I fear has come upon me. And this has been the, the, the moral tact of these friends. Everything, Job, that you've been complaining about, it's because you're a wicked man. And shall drive him to his feet. You know, you know, raise you right up. Stand right up. His strength shall be hunger bent. I would assume Job's maybe not eating. But he's hungry. He's too sore to eat. And destruction, that's the Antichrist, Apollyon, shall be ready at his side. Destruction of the Antichrist is the lake of fire. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Well, for Job is the boil. Remember the Bible speaks about, I, I think it's Job and, and Ezekiel, as the flesh of the, of the dragon, as Le, of Leviathan, as scales close together. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Firstborn of death, that's Jesus Christ. First begotten of the dead, that's Jesus. His confidence in the book of Thessalonians tells he has great confidence. He doesn't even magnify God. He magnifies himself as God. Shall be rooted out of his tab tabernacle. And it shall bring him to king of terrors. I don't know if that's death. I'm going to tell you something else. I'm, and this is, this is personal. You don't have to take it. You don't have to believe it. But there's a man who writes horror stories and knows the Bible very well. And he's called a king. And they call him Stephen King. That man has a lot of Bible knowledge for the wrong use. When he wrote Children of the Corn, they all had Bible names. And you can watch his movies or read his book and you will see Bible. And I'm going to take it to the fact is that when, when the devil spoke to Jesus, the devil was spoken scriptures too. I've not heard anything about Stephen King in any relationship of Jesus Christ. It shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. 
Brimstone. Where do you know brimstone? Fire and brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. Where is he going to live? Brimstone and fire. Is that not the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighboring cities? So, his roots shall be dried up beneath. Remember we talked about that tree that Job said resurrection and the other guy said your tree is going to dry up, going to be dead. Gonna be Here we're back to the tree again. His roots shall be dried up beneath. That's the devil. And above uh, that, above the ground shall his branch be cut off. No life, no fruit. That's Satan. What fruit has Satan produced? Nothing. Because when Satan and all his people are judged at the last judgment, and if their name is not in the book, they're not going to heaven, they're not getting no reward. They get the lake of fire. That's what they get. Nothing to show for. His remembrance shall perish from off the earth. There will be a day that we will forget about Satan, the devil, and Lucifer. We will not ever have the church worried about the mark of the beast. We won't have that to worry anymore. He shall have no name in the street. Now, we're gonna, we will look at this reference now. But have you ever heard a preacher? Have you ever sang a hymn when it, when it says about New Jerusalem, the street plural of gold? You ever heard that plural? It's absolutely wrong. You need to get an eraser. And if the preacher says the streets of New Jerusalem to go, he's wrong and he needs to get right. Now it says street. Shall have no name in the street. There's a street that the devil will never have a name. A street. And if you put streets plural, you ruin the cross reference we're going to look at now. Revelation 21, 21. If you change the Bible, you ruin the cross reference. Because if you go by the hymns, you go by my jury the preachers, you lost out. Now Job says the street. Revelation 21, 21. We'll see what the Bible says. Where are we never going to see the name of the devil again? And the twelve gates, plural, were twelve pearls, plural. Every several gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. The street, singular, singular. Chapter 22, verse 2. In case you miss it, in case you love that lovely hymn that's completely wrong. And in case your preacher preaches the streets of gold, he's wrong. I don't care. You tell him that Bible says, Stiley said, Pastor, you're wrong when you say streets. 22, 2. And the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, there is one street in New Jerusalem. Not streets. So when you come over here to Job chapter 18, verse 17, his remembrance, the devil's remembrance, the Antichrist shall perish from off the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. We won't even talk about the devil in New Jerusalem. How's that? How's that? That's great. That's wonderful. That's a great cross reference. Are we going to know about the devil in, he in heaven? Nope. When we get to New Jerusalem? Nope. No more. He shall be driven from light into darkness is that what hell is now remember bildad is referencing this all to job job you're going to hell is what he's saying isn't that cruel and yet i know christians have gone up to christians that are saved and they've done the same thing because you did what you did you committed that sin you're going to hell and then they get up in the pulpit. Oh, we can't lose it. We'll never be our forever seal. No matter what you do, you can't lose it. But when you commit that one particular sin, you're going to go to hell. 
out. And chased out of the world. <laughs> there will be no more world. Once we get into the new Jerusalem, the new heavens, the new earth, there's no more world. The world hates Jesus. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people. No family. Well, Job, guess what? He has no son now. This guy is cruel. Nor any remaining in his dwellings. All your family is going. All the Bible says you are your father the devil. Anybody who's a child of the devil, that's it. Bye bye. Gone. You will never see the, the family, the children of the devil in glory. Never. How's that for remarkable? No more sin in heaven. Those that are the children of God, those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, those in the Old Testament did what God told them to do according to the dispensation that they were in. We'll be talking about them. They will be glorifying God in Jesus Christ, but we won't be glorifying the devil. He'll be gone. The devil's people will be gone. They'll have no name. And to the fact is that with scripture, there'll be no more remembrance of those, of the devil. He's going to wipe away all our tears. Among his people, nor any remaining in his dwelling. Job, everybody in your household, your homestead, is going to be begging, going to be gone. The world will be gone when the devil's gone. They that come after him shall be astonished. When the devil is gone, and the new heavens and new earth and new Jerusalem come, man, that's going to be a time of rejoicing. I mean, we have a, a city that has a wall, but the gates are always open. You're going to be able to say anything, think anything, and they'll never be wrong. We're never going to have any more pain, no more sorrow, no more party. And if it's like, you know, okay, I'm going to go off to this other side of the universe, whatever. If we had that capability, it's not like, all right, goodbye, we're not going to see you again. I mean, you imagine the astonishment we're going to get when we actually be with Jesus? The Bible can't tell us all of heaven and new Jerusalem, new heavens and new earth. It's just, we have no capability and no comprehension. Of what glory is going to be. It's going to astonish us. We're going to have a body that will not sin. And not have any more boo boo. Will not need a medical doctor for anything anymore. How's that? A body that won't hurt. At his day. The wicked day. As they that went before him were frightened. There are people are frightened. They're under the devil's day. They fear death, they fear pain, they feel sorrow, they have this fear, 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 fear. And they use drugs, they use alcohol, they use anything to try to get that fear away. And you can't, unless you come to the Lord. Surely, such are the dwellings of the wicked. Closing up, you, Job. And this is the place of him. Now, look at this last statement, that knoweth not God. Now that's a, that last statement is not to the Antichrist. The Antichrist, they know God. But these are the people who don't know God and don't want to know God. Job. Haven't we been reading Job's been praying to the Lord? Job's been asking God, what's the trouble? What's the problem? Please, Lord, show me my problem. I want to get right for it. And this guy has the nerve to say, Job, you're not searching God. We had a guy say that, Job, you're not praying to God. Well, guess who's going to speak in 19? Job will be answering. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. 